not everyone had an incredible year per se you know mm. um there are people who've had ups and downs well personally i've had one of those oh, yeah. you know especially this last quarter here mm. i was like good lord i've had <laughs> enough can we can we now you know can we now re- remove me from the refining fire yeah. enough of it mm. you know and i know i speak for you know quite a number of people who, who um they just want this year to end mm. you know mm-hmm. um but then you know for me i also realized that even when while we're in the valley there's so much of god's beauty that we can miss out on mm. because of you know being Swamped. mentally consumed by the tough times or the crisis or whatever mm. it is that we mm. are going through so uh, today's episode i just wanted us to talk about just finding Swamped. god's faithfulness you know so good. Mm. deep in the valley and you know what to do when life throws you cabbles Hello and welcome back to the 360 Perspective podcast with me Trisha. It is um uh, finale of season 2. Um yeah, I know some of you are wondering where I have been or what's been happening. Well, a lot has happened this last quarter of the year. Um yeah, I wasn't quite well health-wise. So it's just been a series of a lot of things happening. But hey, here we are. Uh, ready to end the year together. So, yeah, we hope it's going to be a fun episode and actually today's episode we are going to talk about when life throws you curveballs. Yeah, when life just happens, you know, and like how you anticipated and just getting to review what the year has been. And to do that, I have one of my favorite guests that I have been hosting part of this year. Drum roll. Yes, Angie. I love that you said one of your favorites. This is this is an achievement. Counting this as a celebration. Yes. When I gave the first time I was like, "Lord, please just let, let me not mess up. Let me just be invited again." Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, and you Yay. did amazing. I think Yay. just how you unpacked um the insights, you know, and the wisdom that God has put inside of you and even just the word of God mm. was just it was so beautiful. Like just oh, I thank sh- God. you're such a storyteller. Oh. Honestly, yeah, definitely you're among my my favorite Yay. guests to thank host you. on thank the you podcast. So much for having me. And I appreciate that the fact that you accepted my invite. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Yeah. So so grateful um yeah. to be able to do this and um to plug into what God is doing here yes. and doing with you and um mm. Yeah, earlier on actually I was uh, on my Instagram and I was telling people that it's so awesome to be on like on podcast mm-hmm. but I was just saying that it's one thing to be able to share your experiences but it's a whole other thing mm-hmm. um when God shows up and he speaks to people and he yeah. encourages people and just um just always wanting that to be my posture just mm-hmm. that even as we are sharing here I pray mm-hmm. for all of you guys um to be encouraged to hear God um even through what we share and Yes. Um, all of that so all glory to him for anything Amen. anything that i say on this platform that is that is helpful that is worthwhile it really yeah. is him yeah. yeah amen and that's beautiful mm. uh-huh. so have you been some of us have been mia for like three good months i think is it three <laughs> almost four i don't know i haven't lost count honestly okay maybe three yeah mm, well, last three, time i think. think the last episode was in august yeah yeah around about august, august yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i have i have been good have been good for real for real mm-hmm. um good with uh, i think the good is because god has kept me together Amen. um has kept me together i think mm-hmm. that um there have been things that ha- have uh, sought to take me out i think just as with everybody else mm-hmm. um moments that have been like oh my god i mean am i still standing wait is this my life yeah um all extremes you know high highs and um low lows and mm-hmm. moments where i've just been like okay <laughs> hi god uh yeah are you are you are you still watching yeah. <laughs> i'm just in the fire but are you have yeah. you turned away what's happening yeah. um but I, but i am good i am good um because i'm still alive amen and we are here at the end of the year and it's like wow okay that yeah. thing didn't take me out amen mm. amen and I, that's that's what i wanted us to discuss today you know just finding god's faithfulness in the valley mm. um and i know this year you know for some people it's been amazing and hey we celebrate with you yeah. for those who found mans i found my mans mm. <laughs> and walked down for the those, aisle and walked down the aisle and got babies mm. and you know like all these breakthroughs got a new job or got a promotion and mm. things have just been working out for you you all we are here to celebrate each one of you mm. but then i know not not everyone had 
an incredible year per se, you know. Mm. Um, there are people who've had ups and downs. Well, personally, I've had one of those, you yeah. know, especially this last quarter. Hey, mm. I was like, good Lord, I've had <laughs> enough. Can we, can we now, you know, can we now re- remove me from the refining fire? Yeah. I've had enough of it, mm. you know. And I know I speak for, you know, quite a number of people who... Um, they just want this year to end, you mm, know. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, for me, I also realized that even when, while we're in the valley, there's so much of God's beauty that we can miss out on mm. because of, you know, being mentally consumed by the tough times or the crisis or whatever mm. it is that we mm. are going through. So uh, today's episode, I just wanted us to talk about just finding God's faithfulness, you know. So good. Mm. Deep in the valley and, you know, what to do when life throws you Cambos. But before we jump into that, mm. I wanted to just hear, you know, how has the year been for you? Mm-hmm. It has been a mixed bag. I'm yeah. one of those who has experienced just, I think, yeah, lots of different things. Um, exciting moments. Um, this year I started, I think I had shared before that I'm I'm in school. I'm finishing um, Bible school. Ooh. I'm the last part of that. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Um, because I haven't this this last bit of my of my of my thesis completion has mm-hmm. I haven't been the most disciplined. But yeah. um the Lord is helping me just be able to close that off um well. Yeah. Um but at some point in the year I just felt the Lord invite me to apply for another course. Um I know it's like don't you just have enough on your plate? Wow. Um but then just being able to be accepted um and get full scholarship for it. Wow. Um which was like oh my god what? Yeah. And then in this particular course it's it's like an exclusive course. I think this is the second year they're running it. Um and everybody in my in my course they like fr- around the world mm-hmm. uh, theologians, people with PhDs who are lecturing at like the top top seminaries around the world. Wow. And then there's Angie. Like <laughs> sometimes i'm just there like how am i even here like what am i even going to say like people contribute things i'm like Guy, jesus please like can you just can i yeah. just answer the question in tongues yeah. because i have no idea what actual english words to use yeah so those have been incredible there have mm. just been such moments of wow. like confirmation that okay god is taking me somewhere with this whole with this whole thing mm. um places where i have i mean god's provision has been incredible. I think this year, um, more than ever, I have seen God's provision, especially for my kids' fees. You know, like, when I went back to school, um, I remember telling God, like, God, on top of having to pay my kids' fees, now mm-hmm. I'm going to add mine. Like, and it doesn't even make sense why I'm going back to school for yeah, this. that big baby. So exactly. <laughs> like, I'm just adding myself to the list. And, of course, that yeah. meant that I had to step back from my regular work. Yeah. Um, but this year, I have seen God come through in such a huge way. Um, in sending people to just meet wow. their needs. You know, wow. every once in a while, like I need to make an installment for fees and God would send somebody or God would provide help. And um, and, and just really feeling so cared for by God. Um, mm-hmm. People, I was thinking, was it yesterday or the day before, that people are there looking for sponsors and stuff. But mm-hmm. like God, God has my back like properly. Like I'm not even feeling like... Mm, maybe I should Meanwhile, find uh, God somebody is my sponsor. who's my sponsor. God is mm. my yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so in those ways, it ha- it has been incredible. Um, yeah. The opportunities that I've gotten to 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 minister and to teach and to share His Word. I mean, I just never take those for granted because mm. you know I, I I know myself and I know um, that God could pick a million other people and people who are a lot more qualified and a lot more put together. Mm. Um, so those have been incredible. But I mean. On the other hand, the reality is it, it's it's also been hard. It's yeah. also been hard mm-hmm. um, with regards to, I think at the beginning of this year, I had a, a proper heartbreak. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, it was, it was, I mean, after um, a period of like just not being in relationships and whatever, mm-hmm. and this, this one that was progressing in a way that I felt like, you know, God was in this and things were yeah. working out and stuff. And all of a sudden it was like, no, 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 no. There are things I'm seeing here that are not, um, that I'm not comfortable with. Like my spirit is just not settled. Um, and just needing to take a step back from that and communicating that, but also just the difficulty of processing that. Um, and just being like, seriously, God, honestly, like, haven't yeah. I been through enough? Like, why, why did this one even get through the gate as in, yeah. um, and just taking the time to process that, mm-hmm. um, um issues with you know like uh in at f- like family level um you know some of my relatives have been in accidents this year mm. um and moments where i've just been like like my heart has stopped like oh god mm. 
how how will this play out like this is this is heavy this is hard this is you know and being the first born wow yeah yeah there's a different kind of showing up that you need to you're busy making sure things are okay here making sure things are okay here and also you know maybe not even having places to process mm. all that um that heaviness and mm. um it's 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 been a lot it's it's been a whole mixed bag mm. um but like i said we are in december mm. and none of those things took me out mm. um praise be to god praise yeah. be to god that's just a snippet of my year so yeah. up there exciting things exciting days but also mm-hmm. honestly hard days as well yeah. yeah and i love the fact that I, and i think sometimes that's what we we fail to do you know just taking time to reflect um on on both the good things that have happened you know because mm. i think sometimes when life almost seems unfair or when things are not working out mm. we really get caught up with the things that are not working out oh yeah that we don't take time to really sit down analyze and evaluate mm. what are some of the celebration you know points or yeah. things that have happened in my life that are worth praising god for mm. i mean even simple things just as being alive being yeah. healthy hey some of us you cannot even take it for granted testify you know? <laughs> testify girl testify. after being admitted three times in hospital yo we are a living testimony mm, mm. and i think for me i've learned every day i wake up and you know having that sense of thank you lord i'm alive i'm healthy i'm walking i'm not in a hospital bed yeah. Um, you know, not having doctors doctors around me or nurses around me or sleeping in your own bed. Yeah, sleeping. Oh my god, oh. wearing my clothes. Yo, let me tell you, hospital outfit <laughs> will humble you <laughs> <laughs> with the open back. Hey, hmm? you know me. That was one of those I had to be very particular in hospital. You like you're you almost it's like you're almost dying, but yeah. then you also want to be particular with the exactly. outfit that you're being given. Yeah. I yeah. was like, I keep please just give me something decent. Let me die in decency. <laughs> you know, if I'm gonna die, <laughs> let me at least let me die, be found at know. least in with some sort of decorum. Yeah, you know? some you know some form of modesty. You know, like those outfits are just <laughs> oh my goodness, level of humbling. And you know, like my friends would come and visit me. Mm. Uh, I think when you're kind of used to your friends, the, mm. the moments that you know you make light moments, even mm. when things are mm. difficult, and yeah, trust me, they would burst out laughing. Like it wasn't a funny <laughs> moment, but you know, just the fact that Trisha is just you being humbled like this. I know, and just look at you—you're hey. generally a very put together person. You know, That's just true. all she's just always so. I I try. Put together. I try my best. So now in hospital, it's like. Wow, this hey, my friends would show up and they're just like, "Oi, my sister, my <laughs> sister, is that you?" <laughs> but anyway, I think right now I can laugh about it. But even in that moment, you know, I think it's just one of those you have to make, you know, light of the moment. Exactly. Um, but I think for me, it also made me realize that life is so fickle. You know, like yo, it's like, like a vapor. vapor in the wind. The exactly. Bible says, exactly. Yeah. exactly, like the mist. You know, like mm. you can." Yeah, today gone tomorrow, you yeah. know. And I think for me that awakening, even with the three times I got admitted in hospital, like I had just moments of reflecting of, you know, like what what has my life been mm. like, you know, like how have I lived my life here on earth? You know, mm. If God was to take me, would I say that I've lived a meaningful life? If have I impacted people's lives? Have I mm. served, you know, have mm. I loved on people? um have i you know released forgiveness mm. to those that have hurt me but i think when you go through such kind of like deep valleys and you're like ah, ina enda ina mm. enda you mm. know mm. like you really get that awakening of um honestly if you've not lived a life that's worth it and then man if god gives you another chance or you take it and you're like bra this and time around run. i'm not going to mess it up mm. you know yeah so but um yeah so it's been uh, It's been interesting but I think for me also just being in those deep valleys just taking time to see God's goodness in it mm. and I think I loved what you shared about just how you saw God's provision mm. play out because mm. I think provision is one of the areas that we really struggle oh yeah in oh, you yeah. know because we want to see everything bank account in a Exactly summer. you just There's want to know that this this I need half a million mm mm-hmm. Hallelujah, maybe someone Amen. needs half a million. Hey, care, I need care, your <laughs> half a million. Um, or whatever amount it is. You want it all in the account. You know, yeah. you want to see the whole amount and then be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. But it's harder for us to be able to see God's provision when it's coming. Oh, it's needed on Thursday. It's appearing on Wednesday evening or just in that week. Yeah. Just the amount for that moment. Yeah. It's like, 
Wait, what? Okay, I made this one, but will I be able to do it next week and yeah. whatever? Oh yeah. It yeah, you have all these needs that are script. Because I remember for me, by the th- by the third time I was being admitted, mm. I was literally my insurance was running out. Oh man. You know, and I remember the hospital. I'm in a state of, I am going. You know, and the hospital is like, no, this, you know, roughly this is gonna be the estimate of her admission, and so <laughs> you either have to pay upfront because you know my insurance was almost depleted. Mm. I think just seeing how God came through mm. and not having to spend even a coin out of my oh, pocket wow. for me was just one of those. Look I feel like God. for me this mm. year, like I remember when we began the year, one of the anchor. Uh, verses from the Bible was just Psalms 23. You mm. know, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm. I lack nothing. Mm. You know, I shall not want. You mm. know, and I think that's the reality of life. Mm. You know, that when you put your trust in God, mm. it doesn't matter how, you know, whatever comes your way, you know, but just knowing whether it's provision, God will supply. Whether mm. it's community, God mm. will supply. Whether mm. it's, you know, just people coming so through good. for you doesn't have to be finances, mm. you know. Like God has you covered, you yeah, know. Yeah. As when you have God as your shepherd, and then mm. every other thing that it's concerns handled. you, mm. you, you're just a sheep. You're just a sheep. Yeah, you're and just you never a see sheep. sheep <laughs> going around and not, not trying to have like collaborations there. Like us as sheep, now this is what we are feeling. The yeah. Us as sheep are going to speak here and there. Yeah, they're, they're just carefree. Carefree. They, just, they know the yeah. shepherd will lead them. You know, mm. they'll drink water. They'll have enough grass for the day. Mm. They will go and lay down and rest. Mm. They'll wake up the next day. And, you know, mm. they know they're in good hands. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and I think... Psalms 23 is just the epitome of, you know, just what it means being a sheep that is fully reliant yeah. on the shepherd. Let the shepherd take care of you. you the know? sufficiency of God and it's not nothing else, just the sufficiency of God. Yeah. And trusting that. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know for you whether you, you had like an anchoring uh, verse that held you through, mm. held you down most of the year. Mm. Especially in those moments when you, you know, those moments when you're like, wait. Yeah. I think one of them is uh, actually, it is. Um, um, da, 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 da. I will not. Li- I will not die, but I will live, proclaim the goodness of God in the mm. land of the living. Um, and just repeatedly, you know, I think th- many times I hadn't actually thought about what that anchoring verse was, but it's just come back to me. Mm. It's come to me now. Um, mm. But just in those moments of just feeling such desperation, or feeling like, oh, man, this is a lot. This is a lot. And then that coming to my heart that, mm. you know what, I'm not going to die in this situation, whether it's a physical death mm. um, or, I mean, even, many even times it was not even physical, even emotional and just, yeah. and just feeling so like overwhelmed. overwhelmed, you know, I just would just say, you know, or it would just come to my heart, mm. I will not die, but I will live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will, this thing will not finish me, you know, um, I think also um, corresponding with that is Isaiah 40, 43, one to four, you know, uh, especially verse four, it says, when you walk through the waters, they will not um, flood over you, wash over you. When you pass through the fire, it will not burn you, you know. Um, just all of that, just just saying over and over and being reminded that this thing, this particular mm. thing will not be the thing that will finish me. Mm. You know, I will live to proclaim I mean, mm. I believe proclaim means this moment will come, it will pass, mm. and there will be a day that I will be able to speak back about mm. that day and encourage somebody else that, hey, I was there. Mm. I have made it to the other mm. side. God has been good. God has been exactly who he promised that he would be, mm. and I am on the other side. Yeah, and yeah. here we are, yeah. literally on the other side, because I think for me also, I remember being in that hospital bed and, you know, proclaiming that mm. verse, or even when I was being rushed to hospital and just, you know, just... Speaking out those words, you know, I will live and not die. I will live to proclaim, you know, the goodness of, the goodness God. of God. Mm. You know, and I think for me, when I came out of this whole shebang, you know, hospital drama and all that, mm. I told myself, Yo, uh, you know, I won't do justice if I don't speak about this wow. as yeah. the final episode for the year, just mm. speaking about God's goodness and mm. just what God has carried me through and taken me through. Mm. Um, and, you know, it also reminds me of the verse where David says, when my heart is overwhelmed, Lead, lead me, me to the rock that is higher than I. Mm. I think that's the reality of life, you know, because you get to spaces and places where life is so overwhelming mm. that, you know, sometimes I sit and I'm like, I don't know how people would do life without Christ. How? How? Yay. I actually Yay. think I would probably go how? mad. Like, completely. Yeah. Like, you would lose it. Yeah, it's crazy because I feel like life is already... I mean, it's already crazy in itself, you know, in God. And the thing you know, about life is that it doesn't discriminate. 
it doesn't yes. discriminate everybody everybody will have unfair dealings life will deal you unfair hands life will throw you curveballs what we're talking about life will give you the best of days yeah. and the hardest of mo- it doesn't literally life does not discriminate mm. so if you don't have a place to be anchored yeah. or to make sense of all of it yeah um or to process it or mm. to have it lifted off of you because sometimes it's literally that god i'm feeling crushed in this moment i need you to take this thing that is sitting on my chest when you said trade my heavy your heavy burden mm-hmm. for my light yoke mm-hmm. and light yeah, it's true if you don't have a place like that yeah where are you going yeah it's tough it's tough because i think man just that first you know my heart is overwhelmed because our hearts do get mm-hmm. overwhelmed you know mm-hmm. by the issues of life by the things that we go through mm-hmm. heartbreaks divorce sickness mm. grief and loss like so many things so many things as mm. you said it's easy f- they can take you out literally you, you know they can take you out and you can live in such you know space of darkness and gloom mm. because of the weightiness of the things that you've gone through life yeah. but i think just constantly taking it back to god mm. you know and and sometimes verbalizing it you know because i think for me a lot of those moments have come out of them because i've had to every day wake up and verbalize the scripture you mm. know speak it out speak it out loud you know and and like for me the the series of being unwell the three months that i've been mm. quite unwell mm. like i had to really speak god's word and stand mm. upon god's word and listen to music that is in line with god's word and i know for me like um Nyasha's song, you know, mm-hmm. Jumbo Jipia, because that's 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 what she says in the song, mm. you know, I will live and not die, yeah. you know, I will live to proclaim the goodness of God. Mm. You know, and just singing it out or yeah. even just having that music okay. around that environment, mm. you know. But um for me I, I know those are some of the things that I've had to really cling on to mm. that have pulled me out of situations that would have easily taken me out mm. or would have overwhelmed me or left mm. me in a space of, you know, just gloom and great sadness mm. and yeah mm. that's so good that's so good i like that just the creating that atmosphere where where truth is ringing around yeah. you know because i mean many times we hear and we know in the word that the mind is a battlefield you know and that's where the enemy wants to oppress you mm. by the time you're getting this depressive thoughts and anxious thoughts and suicidal thoughts yeah. it's here like yeah, it's not it's coming to mind. stand in front of you and say this and this it's in the mind yeah. um and just being able to do like philippians forces you know to set our minds on um or whatever think about what is pure and noble and praiseworthy yeah. um so yeah just the word the word of god and that atmosphere i think sometimes it's just it's also the stepping back you know i think just listening to you earlier uh, before we started recording was just the what 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 you had mentioned about just the need to step away even i guess from social media mm. and from um active service mm. um in that sense i mean of course there's one dimension where okay like physically you're like okay i can't necessarily serve in this particular way mm. um but i think the reality of 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 remembering our humanity mm. um in those hard places because there's a way in which I mean everything that we're able to do as Christians is literally just a work of grace. Yeah. It is God enabling us to to preach, to teach, to serve people, to give words to people, to anything that we're able to do. Um and in the moments when we are unable to do that is to remember I'm just human. Mm-hmm. This work belongs to God. Mm-hmm. The church belongs to God. These people are God's. These children are God's. These this 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 community belongs to God and 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 sometimes we don't maybe see or experience God's goodness and his ministry to us mm-hmm. in the times when we need to be ministered to in our in our weakness in our hurt in our hard places mm-hmm. because we're so overextended i must show up i must i must have an uh, episode out every mm-hmm. single week i need mm-hmm. to still do this i need to still do this yeah. and sometimes it's that man it's painful and it's hard and it's it's hurting right now mm-hmm. i need to step back i just need to be in a place just me and God or I just need to be in the place where it's just me and my Bible study group. Mm. It's just me and the closest people around me praying for me and encouraging me because mm. the reality is it's painful. I've mm. lost a loved one, it's painful. I've mm. lost um you know uh, an opportunity, it's painful. I have lost my job and now it is almost feeling catastrophic. Maybe it's not even a catastrophic thing, but sometimes I think even to be able to see and experience God's goodness is being able to allow God to 
to carry you yeah. and to minister to you and to pour into you through people, um, through the time of rest, through just getting away with him, mm. um, just recognizing that you're human. Um, the work will still go on with or without you. Um, and just sitting and being like, okay, God, yeah. um, I'm in this place. Mm. What do you want to teach me here? Mm. Or just hold me here. Or I'm just going to be still mm. in this particular place. I think that's, that's also something that 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 helps yeah. uh, because sometimes we can try and trudge on and and we are walking hobbling yeah. we are bleeding as we go we are yeah. um we're not okay we're not okay it's true yeah. it's true and as you said it seeps out if you're mm. not okay in one or another you know it it seeps out especially when you're in that place of active ministry or, mm. or serving people or just wanting to be at the front line mm. when you're not okay it's it's I mean, I think that's a profound quote that you said, you know, mm. just taking time to pull back. But I think also the beauty about pulling back is it allows you to see the goodness of God mm. in those moments, mm. you know, because you see the people that God sends your way in those particular yeah. moments, you begin realizing, you know, just God's covering, you know, mm. and, pro- and provision yeah. or um, just the fact that, wow, it's been a whole week. I've made it through, you yeah. know, yeah. just little things that, may not be really grandiose, you know, in terms of, wow, this shabang thing that God has mm, done. Mm. But just little things that you you look, you observe, and you realize God is actually here with mm, me. You know, he's not mm. left. He's never left. You know, mm. he's very active even in those moments um, mm. where life almost seems to take you out. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that's, that's very profound. Mm. And I know when we were talking about earlier about, you know, we don't know how people who don't know God survive mm. i'm also very cognizant of the of the fact that there are people who maybe they began the journey well with mm. christ you know mm. they gave their life to christ but way up we were somewhere in the mm. middle of the year you know things happen and kidong kidogo backsliding one thing after another after mm. another and you know i'm pretty sure you know there could be people watching today's episode just feeling like i don't know how to get back in my relationship with God, you know, I feel mm. like I started out the year right, I started out with God, but mm. then things came in between, and I've really struggled with with sin, and but then I want to live for God, you know, like how Paul says, mm. the things that I want to do, <laughs> I don't do them, yeah, mm-hmm. and then those ones that I do not want to do, mm. I find myself doing them, mm. you know, and uh, I know that people who could be there and they're like, yo, I really admire you guys, I admire your relationship with God, and um, just how you get guys are sailing on with mm. God. But then I don't know how to do it. I've tried it. I've made that attempt. Mm. But yo, here we are in December and just things went a different direction. How can we encourage them to the place of getting back to restoration and their relationship with God? Wow. Um, I think the first thing to note is that none of us is perfect. Mm-hmm. That Kindly might. note. Please note. Please note. Bold letters yes. in red. Yes, yes, yes. Completely. I think one of my favorite things in this Christian journey is this this whole concept of grace. Yeah. Um, I think it's in Titus 2 and the Bible says, The grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to say no to ungodliness and worldliness and um, helping us live self-controlled, upright lives. Mm. Um, this, this, this thing is not a thing of mastering your will. Or yeah. psyching yourself up like today I'm going to be no 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 no. In fact, as soon as you say today ah, I am going you fail. to, you have failed because <laughs> that is your flesh. You know, you could that is pride. pride. Um, and 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 life has a way of humbling. Very <laughs> you, much. You think you are father. You know, Paul says, um, let anybody who thinks they stand be careful. Be, be, lest, lest you, you fall. fall. Um, because we don't, we don't, we don't even know the extent of our brokenness, the extent of our wickedness sometimes, mm. um, and things that are in us that we that that God is working uh, on perfecting. So yeah. please don't don't look here and be like, oh man, one day I just want to be like. It's not us you're aspiring to. We're all trying to be uh, more like Christ. Yeah, following um, Christ. Following Christ exactly. Um, but here's the thing: um, even in our falling and things like that the grace is extended consistently constantly yeah. um in 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 Christ Jesus the bible says grace and truth are are in him and um i'm thinking about uh there's a verse that talks about the righteous man falls seven times but he gets up and you know maybe you're there and you're thinking uh, yeah mine is more like 77 times <laughs> <laughs> um but you know what it's seven was just the number that was used there yeah. um that for as many times as you fall grace has been extended yeah. 
um, Jesus did not die for sin up until a particular place. And then now he's just there saying, no, Trisha, now, uh-uh, 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 now damu yangu sasa hajafika hapo. My blood was <laughs> My not blood enough for over. there. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You've, You've overdone. Water? Exactly, like insurance. You mm. know that, that that is it now? Depleted. Exactly, depleted. No such thing. Is that... um any single time that your heart is turned, you know, any time you, you're there and you're thinking, my goodness, I need to get back. First and foremost, that is the Holy Spirit running after you, chasing you. The hound of heaven yeah. is after you. Um, because if you have given your life to Christ, then the seal of the Holy Spirit is upon you. Regardless of wherever you go, Psalm 139 says, even if I make my bed in hell, yeah, his spirit there. is there. If I go to the farthest parts of the ocean, his spirit is there. And so um, wherever you are right now, even if you're in somebody's bed, Mm. who you're not supposed to be in. Mm. <laughs> it's the weather. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the weather. Exactly. Day. It's the holiday, you know, coupling and whatever. You just need to take somebody home, whether you're in yeah. somebody's bed, whether you are in prison, you are in the dungeon of your mind or even physically, you know, an actual physical place or in addiction or whatever mm. it is, however dramatic it seems externally or even just internally, mm. um, the spirit of God is right where you are. And all you need to do is just say, help or God, I'm here. That's, that's like, I just, I need you. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be a complicated thing. Literally, God is right where you are and yeah. so desiring to restore you. The story of the prodigal son, you know, he goes out and all these things. Um, but at the point when he just, you know, like he came to his senses and he was like, wait, what am I doing here? Mm. Like, let me just go back. Let me let me just go back and I'll I'll just you know I'm I'm ready to be the lowest of the lowest the servant, mm-hmm. um and even before he finished his whole speech you know he had a way to panga his dad you know he had a way in which he wanted his dad to deal with him mm-hmm. but his dad had his own program on his restoration plan and the same is true for all of us mm-hmm. any single time we just turn our hearts towards him he is so ready and mm-hmm. so full of mercy um full of grace to be able to restore us. Uh, back to himself so it doesn't matter how much you have fallen it doesn't matter if the last time you read the bible was in january when we do the fasting and prayer across yes. different churches maybe yeah. that was the last you did uh, maybe you felt like god disappointed you along the year um, whatever the situation is you don't have to pretend you can cry out right where you are and god is right there so ready to to restore you um, so ready and so willing um, to just restore that fellowship um, and that 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 uh, connection with you just at your opening yourself up back mm. to him yeah, yeah yeah you know i love the verse where it's in romans where it says um it talks about god's love and then it says while we are yet sinners mm. Christ 5 died. 8 yes romans 5 yeah. 8 yeah. yeah so it's <clears throat> i think the beauty about that verse is that god did not wait for you to be perfect you oh, know yeah. he didn't wait until You've repented and now you're a good person, you know, mm. for him to forgive your sins. No, why yeah. you, we were yet sinners mm. in our ugly state of unworthiness, you yes. know, undeserving of his yes. grace, his love, mm. his mercy, his forgiveness. We were absolutely undeserving. Mm. But in that particular state, Christ died for us. Mm. And I think for me, I've, I've also in my Christian walk, I've learned to just the habit of getting back, you know, mm. getting, and yeah, just not in my Christian journey alone, but in other aspects of my life, you know, because sometimes you, you, you know, you have all these goals. Oh yeah, I'm going to study the whole Bible. Mm. I'm going to do all these things. And then gonna things work happen, out. you know, yeah, I'm going to work out. I'm going to do all these things, but then things happen. But mm. I think for me, I've learned the habit of every new day, it's an opportunity to start again. Exactly. You know, if I didn't, Study the word, maybe the past couple of weeks, today's a fresh day yeah. to begin again. You know, yeah. And I think also doing that with your relationship with God, choosing mm. Christ every single day. Mm. I remember that's for so me, the good. beginning of the year, that's the one thing I, I told myself um, concerning what my year is going to look like. You know? Mm. Um, you know, I told God my desire is to every day, give me the grace to wake up and choose you mm. because sometimes it's hard you yeah. know you wake up and you want to choose your flesh or mm. uh, you know or you actually choose your flesh mm. over god you know mm. on some things yeah. but then just every day waking up and asking god to give you the grace to choose him mm. over every other thing you over know and everything. then going back to god when you mess up you know yeah. we, we have such a loving father that i i pray and i wish everyone would just understand the extent of god's love mm. you know in that mm. God is that father who 
gosh, his the extent of his love, his grace and his mercy, especially when we repent. Mm. I remember reading because I've been doing that journey of just studying throughout through the whole Bible. Mm. And when you read the story of the kings, mm. you know, and some of the awful things they would do, Ooh. all these idols and you know, they would mess up big time. Mm. But then Even sacrificing their kids. Their own kids. Oh. And then they go back to God with a repentant heart. And God forgives them. Like yeah. they never did anything. Yeah. You know, and I get why Jonah was so mad. Yeah. You know, because I mean these people were a mess, you know, it's according terrible. to the human standard. Yeah. Yeah, like this one is unforgivable. Let's mm. God quanga serious. Mm. This ones uh, uh, they have you even, it even you have experienced that reading some of those kings. I think it's King is it Manasseh? Um, yeah. who was just unbelievable. Yes. And then he just repents and God is like, Okay. Yes. You're like Seriously, God, why are you not in the previous verses? It's crazy. Yeah. It's almost disturbing. <laughs> almost disturbing. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. But I think for me, reading mm. reading that and realizing, oh my gosh, when you truly understand the heart of God towards his creation, oh, you know, man. towards his children, mm. and the fact that he's chosen you while you are a mess, you know, sent his best of the best of the best in heaven mm. to die for somebody who wasn't even worthy of it. Mm. I think that's the most humbling and okay. the most exciting thing about being a believer, knowing that God loves me so much mm. that looking in the Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of God. Exactly. You know, absolutely nothing. nothing. And I think that's the mm. thing that ought to give us the confidence to go mm. back to Christ, you know, to go back to the throne of grace so that we may receive uh throne of God so that we may receive um, you know, mercy and find grace, grace to help us in our time of need. Mm. And, you know, that's my prayer for anyone who may have felt like my relationship with God has been a bit of a mess throughout the year. Mm. It's not too late. You know, it's you can not. still go back and approach the throne of um, of God, you know, mm. so that you may receive mercy, you know, because in his throne, there's mercy. And the Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment, mm. you know. And, and if God can forgive some of those kings who did, oh my goodness, crazy things, ah, I'm sure you've not sacrificed mm. your son or your daughter. And even if you have, there's still mercy. You know, if you go to God with a repentant mm. heart, there's room. There's room for you and there's a place for you exactly. at the king's table. So mm. my prayer is that, you know, at least uh, we'll amend our relationship with God mm. as the year ends so that we yeah. finish strong in the Lord mm. and we renew our commitments to follow and pursue God even yeah. as we look forward to opening another chapter by God's will, you know, mm. in, in 2024. Mm. And even as we um, almost come to the end of this conversation, um, for those who are feeling hopeless, you mm. know, those who are in a space of just gloom and a lot of things, and, you know, they don't know how to get back to that place of hope. Mm. What word of encouragement can we offer today? Wow. Um that's so interesting that you asked that question because just now I was, I was going to ask you yeah. um, about um, people who feel like they've been in the valley or they've gotten to the place of the valley yeah. and like feeling abandoned by God or yeah. feeling like yeah. betrayed yeah. by and God. And sometimes you can even be there a bit longer yeah. than you yeah, thought. Exactly. It's like, okay, I thought I was just passing through and now it's been 40 years, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, yeah just, just feeling like that. And I think that, um, I think what I'd say is, is that it's normal to feel, um, to feel some of those feelings, you know, um, yeah. sometimes we want answers that are not readily available. Um, and God in his sovereignty does not give answers right when we want them. Sometimes, yeah. um, I think about the story of, um, uh, Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus, and he dies. Um, but before he died, they had given word to Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, their good friend. This is not Jesus who we were talking to um, by a prayer. This was their friend who they knew in person, and um, and they knew they had seen him heal. He had seen him um, deliver, set free, all these things. So they knew. They knew. They knew who he was. They knew his heart towards them. He knew. They knew he loved them, um, and they loved him as well. They sent a word. Um, but then the Bible records um, that because Jesus loved them, he yeah. stayed a little longer. Mm. He stayed a little longer. Very and ironic. Yeah, yeah. It's like wait because, and you switch version, and it's still the same thing. Yeah. Um, for he loved them exactly. It just seems so strange. Um, and Lazarus dies. Um, and by the time Jesus shows up, I think it's I think it's John eleven. 
um, the time Jesus shows up, it's like Mary and Martha are so devastated. People are mourning and things like that. I mean, and they're in a true state of hopelessness because it's 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 one thing that grief already, like losing somebody, losing a loved one, is already such a heavy burden. But losing somebody when you are confident and sure that God's heart was like God could have done something about it. Um, when we think about our own lives, it's like, okay, Lord, but but why did I have to go through this? Why why did I have to, you know, be in hospital? I mean, like them, I could have maybe even, you know, sometimes even it could be something like I went for a checkup today and the th- complication got, the, you know, yeah. happened tomorrow. Yeah. But like, why, why didn't the doctors discover it on the day that I on went? Like, days. what's up, God? Like, where's the heads up? Where's the... <sighs> Um, whether it's a promotion, like if people are being laid off, um, I think in the very first time that I was here, I remember sharing about um my marriage ending, and it was like mm. God. I mean, you knew. Like, and I did everything. I did everything, and you knew. Like you're God outside of time, so you already knew and saw the place where I would come to this thing and whatever you could have saved me from this path and this journey, um, and just a feeling of like. Either God, where were you? Or God, this is a setup. This is horrible. It's a terrible joke. It makes no sense. Um, And I think a lot of that sometimes maybe feeds into our hopelessness. But I think a couple of things that I mean, I I think I could could share um, maybe from the story of uh, Mary and Martha um, in that particular case um, was the the realness with which they came to God. Mm -hmm. Um, You see Mary coming and she's falling there and she's just like, like in her brokenness, like she was feeling hopeless. She was feeling betrayed and heavy and all those things. And she comes to Jesus when he appears and she just falls on the ground. Very African uh, dramatic. She must have been Luya. She must be in Luya. That one was a relative. <laughs> eh? And Mary, you know, Mary, it's a it's a Luya name. Come Maria. Maria. You know, that's Maria. that's a relative of mine for sure. <laughs> and she's just there. And she's that's her. That's her expression. Yeah. And Martha comes, and Martha is different because we already know Martha is the cleaning and proper and rational kind of person. And she just like takes God on, you know, yeah. Jesus on. And like, yeah. where were you? Like, yeah, I know that in the resurrection there'll be that and whatever. But yeah. like in this particular situation, you know, yes. and the level of how she expresses herself she was honest and nani with with jesus and very just blunt. said very blunt yeah. and this is this is how i'm feeling and whatever and i think that sometimes even in that place of hopelessness bring it to god don't don't let that hopelessness drive you away from god let it not um do not allow yourself to fall away from the faith fall mm. in god if it's yes. collapsing collapse in, in him if it's crying it's to him every single day like god seriously if it's you know asking questions to maybe pastors and people in your community but like make this make sense you know mm. i think just coming coming to god and then i think it's the, the 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 thing in um hopelessness as well is being able to hear what um to to, to know the presence of god in that place you know john eleven thirty five talks about jesus weeping mm. um you know god god is a present help. I think it's some some forty six. Yeah. yeah, God is a present help in time of need, yeah. and just knowing that God is right there. God is right there. You might not feel Him. You might not see Him. You might not understand how He's working, but truly, as you were saying, declaring God's word and just reminding yourself of the truth of God's word. Mm-hmm. It's not a feelings thing. It's not mm-hmm. a feelings thing. Mm-hmm. That even in the middle of my hopelessness, God is right here. God, mm-hmm. I thank you that you're right here. God, I thank you that even Though I can't see, there is something that you're working that is for my good and for your glory, as Romans 8.28 says. And then the other thing I think is is just obedience um, in the place of hopelessness is coming back to the, the, the place of, I don't see it, I don't know how, whatever it is, but whatever you say to do in this place, I'm going to obey. Jesus says, um, go and open the tube. And it's like, okay, yeah, but the guy has been in there for four days. This is this is going to be a mess. This is going to be a situation, Jesus. It's already bad. Yes. It was bad when you're not here. Now you're coming and you're making it, you're worse. Making it worse. You want us to open things up, yeah. you know, and that might look different for every single person. Yeah. But it's also just obedience. Yeah. Sometimes it's keep showing up at work. Keep loving. Keep um, praying. That keep releasing that, that person. Yeah, releasing that forgiveness. Whatever it is, just the obedience yeah. and knowing that on the other side, of you being honest with God, of you and, and and just speaking, of you resting in the place that he's there, mm-hmm. that he's weeping with you, that he's broken with you, and he's offering strength and grace in that place, mm-hmm. and obedience, mm-hmm. there is life. Mm-hmm. There is resurrection and there is life. And the hopelessness, the hopelessness does not have the final say. Because Christ, the Bible talks about Christ in us, the hope of glory, and the different dimensions of hope. 
the hope that we have mm-hmm. is not a hope that is wishful thinking. Yeah. It's not psyching yourself up that, oh, I hope today will be a good day. I hope it will be sunny. Mm-hmm. This is a sure hope mm-hmm. that God says, through seeing what I've done in Christ Jesus, mm-hmm. the fact that he went into, he actually died a real death. Mm-hmm. He was buried and he stayed there. And the Bible records he went into hell mm-hmm. and came up. The fact that there is resurrection in Christ Jesus means that for every single person and every single situation mm-hmm. that is connected to God, that is given to God, mm-hmm. that there is hope. That the end of that story is positive, mm-hmm. is joyous, is hopeful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so invite him in. Yeah. Be honest and real know that and remind yourself that he is a present help and he's there with you, mm-hmm. feeling with you and doing what needs to be done there yeah. and walking in obedience, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, promise, 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 promise. Not from myself, but from God's word yeah. that that there is brighter days ahead yeah. for sure. So wow. Yeah. That's powerful. It reminds me of the words uh, when whom have I in heaven but you and mm. on earth there's nothing I desire no. besides you. And then mm. he finish off he finishes off by saying, My heart and my flesh may fail. Oosh. But God is the strength, strength. of my heart. Mm. Yeah. I, I think yeah. just and that my portion bit, forever. And my mm. portion forever. I think that place of, of realizing that our our humanity is so frail, you know, and very fragile and mm. breaking and being overwhelmed and being, you know, overcome by you know, depression and gloom and grief and all mm. these things. Like our bodies are subjected to all those things. Yeah. And so the only place where we can find hope, we can find refuge, you can find life, mm. we can find meaning, we can get restoration and all those things. It's only in Christ. Every mm. other thing will fail. Every yeah. other thing yeah. will fail. But then if, if God is not the strength of your heart, Ooh. then what to you? <laughs> you mm. know, what to you? Mm. All right. So finally, 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 let's talk about the lessons we've learned in twenty. 23 as we conclude this conversation mm. yeah what are some of the insightful lessons that you've learned or that you've ta- you're taking away with you um as you as we enter into another year that mm. you'd love to pass along well i think there let me see one of them is that um i think a reminder even as we're having this conversation is that life is a mixed bag um Bad, bad days and bad situations and bad seasons have a way of um, trying to take over. You know, it's like mold, trying to be the whole thing, like just like a, um, a disease or infected cells, like just wanting to take over. Um, but just being able to step back and see and just reflect. Reflecting is important. Regular reflection is important because a bad day doesn't make a bad life. Mm -hmm. Uh, A bad week, a bad season doesn't make a bad life. Um, There is so much good. There is so much good. There's so much of God's goodness that we experience. The fact that we are breathing, the fact that we are free, the fact that we are free to worship, the fact that we can record this freely, you know, and talk about God and his goodness. Without any oppression. Exactly, without any oppression. The fact that we have a home, the fact that we have friends, the fact that we... Just all these different things. There's so much good, yeah. so so much good, and the and the moments of hardship and difficulty um, should never be allowed a microphone yeah. <laughs> to, uh, and and an audience to speak louder than the goodness of God, because the goodness of God mm-hmm. is always greater um, than than the hard moments and the difficult moments. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's one. Another one is that. Everything will pass. <laughs> yeah. Everything will pass. You know, the Bible says heaven and earth will fade, they will pass away, but yeah. God's word will remain. Yes. Um, even in the moments, in the moments that are awesome and exciting, celebrate, be in the moment, rejoice, because in the ebbs and flows of life, they might not last forever. Not yeah. that we're uh, jinxing anyone, yeah. um, <laughs> but it's a reality yeah. um, that our days pass and seasons change. Uh, But enjoy, deeply enjoy the moments that God grants. Um, But even in the hard times, just know it's passing. Like you're not going to be there forever. um, And you're going to be fine. Lafu Yamwisho, the last one is that it's grace. It is grace. You know, the him him writer said, it was grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. Um, God's grace, God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient for every single situation, for every hardship, every heartbreak, every painful place, every provision need, everything, everything that we need, 
um, is extended to us in God's grace. And none of these things, as the last point, Romans uh, 8, what you talked about, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Paul writes, um, is it hardship? Is it the sword? You can insert whatever it is that has gone through, you know. Um, is it heartbreak? Is it divorce? Mm. Is it uh, accidents? Is it health scares? Is it um, rejection? Is it um, redundancy? Mm. None of that. I am convinced that none of that is able to separate us. It's able to separate me mm. from the love of God that is in Christ yes. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think for me, we. One of the hardest one has been giving up control and mm. accepting that I need help. Ooh. I think up with I remember in the hospital, a lot of the nurses trying to help me, but then I'm still insisting. No, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't but then it. my body is just like, sis, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they think for me, yeah. I've learned, um, yeah, just giving up control, letting mm. God, trusting God, and accepting help. You know, mm. I think that people who are designed to you know, either workaholic or you know, just getting things done, and so receiving help sometimes is a challenge. Mm. I think I've learned to just give it up, accept I am weak. Mm. Gosh, yeah, that, that accepting bit of... For that you're human. You hu- yeah, 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 accepting your, the human part of we're all weak mm. and fragile. And we need people, we need community, we need yeah. assistance, we need help. I think for me that those have been some of the lessons that I've learned. Mm. But also just... You know, searching for God's goodness in the valley. You know, mm. Because when you search for it, you'll find it. You yeah. know, you realize yeah. that even here in this valley, God God has been present. Mm. You know, God has been God. God has been faithful. Mm. And I- in essence, God has been bigger than the valley. So you know? good. So yeah, good. Yeah. Mm. You know, you, you realize when you begin counting your blessings, man, yeah, you're like, ah, this cavalier, yeah? this the thing that was overwhelming mm. me, you know? Mm. Because when you focus on God, he, you know, you begin seeing his preeminence in the whole situation, mm. you know, like the fullness of his glory, you yes. know, yeah. even while you are deep in that valley. Mm. And I think for me, I've one of the things I'm taking into the new year is just that place of constant gratitude, mm. you know, being in that place of constant um, thankfulness mm. and um, identifying things to be grateful for, you know, because a grateful heart, it's very hard for the devil to... Yeah, to put down mm. very, mm. very, very, very hard. When you can find something to be grateful for, yeah. it's gonna be hard. Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you. Gosh, I do celebrate me. you very, very much. I celebrate what God is doing in your life Amen. and the fact yeah. that He's taking you and just using you as a voice of um, of reason. And also just carrying the message of Christ to Amen. all those that he's put around you. So I honor you, I celebrate you. And I can't wait to see the match that God is yet uh, to do Amen. through you. Amen. Amen. And, and you. I am so glad that the Lord has preserved you. Amen. I am one of many, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and all our audience. I'm yeah. um, just thanking God for a new lease on life. Yes. Um, Amen. The enemy thought he had you. Hey. And God was like, uh-uh. no. Uh-uh. That one is mine. Yeah, that one is mine. And even what the enemy meant for evil. Yeah, God turned um, it around. Yeah, he Good. turned it around, and I and I believe that um, with with long life, you will satisfy you. Amen. Um, and you will enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land Amen. of the Amen. living. That you will yes. testify Kabisa. um of His greatness, and uh, many, many, many will continue being blessed. Amen. Um, Amen. through your life. So, Amen. and we'll be back yeah. here mm. over and over just to testify of God's goodness and faithfulness. Mm. Um, but yeah, this marks the end of uh, season two <laughs> yeah. it's been a journey I know, being in my three months but here we are finally in the final final end of this journey but thank you so much for all those who have subscribed um, I know you know a lot of people have been subscribing even while I've not been putting no. out content mm. but I, I do celebrate each one of you thank you so much for all those supporters and fans and cheerleaders and those who share this uh, podcast with their circles and their friends Thank you so much. I do celebrate and honor each one of you. And I pray that today's episode has been a blessing to you. So it doesn't matter whether you are, you know, in the valley, down there in the bottom or on the mountaintops. But I do pray that you can learn to find God's goodness in whatever space that you are in. Because God Mm. is good and is bigger than any other thing that we may be facing in, um, in this life. But that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and to like uh, this episode and also to share, you know, mm. in the comment section. Let us know how's your year been. 
uh, what has been some some of the highlights and lessons that you've learned uh, throughout this year we'll appreciate when you get your comments otherwise we sing merry christmas <laughs> <Emma>. <laughs> Yeah, um, <coughs> people have different versions. Let's just say Merry Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Uh, yeah. And a Happy New and Year. And a Happy New Year. Yes. God Merry, bless you. God bless you. Merry Christmas and enjoy your holidays. See you in our next season. Yay. Bye. Bye.